seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> to another edition of the Vegas Squares podcast sitting here in the studio and it is week number nine in the NFL earlier in the week Tony Johnson myself and we enlisted the services of Mike Carvelis of Mike said it first we did uh, instead of the golf we talked about our mid-season thoughts and takeaways from this COVID-19 strange NFL season so uh, I've got, uh, obviously, Token Johnson's back, but Token did not get to be a part of that. So, Token, I kind of want to know, just to open up the show, your midseason MVP and your biggest surprise, whether it be team or player, of the first eight weeks of the NFL season. Uh, midseason MVP, for me, goes out to Russell Wilson. It's kind of like back and forth between Mahomes and him, but... In my mindset, Russell's been more consistent, more of a leader, leading that charge and getting that team to lead the division with kind of a weak running game right now. I mean, he's kind of controlling it all, and it's going to be interesting what the second half of the season looks like for Seattle, especially coming forward. So, And then uh, what was the second question again that you were asking? Uh, your biggest surprise, either team or player, or just your biggest takeaway from this first eight weeks? Biggest surprise kind of is the Browns to me. Like, actually, kind of how decent they're doing, but in my opinion, they're still overrated, and there's still plenty of games left where they can just brown on their fans. So, <laughs> Brown was a verb now. There you go, yeah. Um, that doesn't sound like a good one either, really, to be honest with you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got to say, I think uh, you calling the Seattle game running game weak might even be a compliment. It's atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> so even just calling them weak is maybe a step up from what they really are. But uh, we are going to do some week nine picks as we do every weekend here, our Saturday night slash Sunday morning show. It's the biggest squares podcast. Myself, Tony Johnson, and Token Tony. No spike this week. But before we dive into all the action, I want to thank a couple of sponsors, obviously the 12 Ounce Sports Network, who broadcasts us, supports us, hosts us, does, ever, does it all for us. Uh, we are broadcasted mostly in audio and video formats. Check out all the shows at 120zsportsnetwork.com. And while you're there, check out the 12 Ounce Sports Store. And Zingo TV, if you're watching us on there, thank you very much. If you're not watching us or you're watching us on YouTube, you can sign up for a free Zingo TV account using the promo code 120Z, and it's 100% free, no cost to you. You can download on your iPhone, Android device, or smart TV. We are on channel 761, along with the rest of the 12-ounce shows. Just to run quickly through our sponsors, our title sponsors, Vice Golf and Fanatics.com. We have affiliate links on LVSquares.com. Click the Sponsors tab, and you can shop using those affiliate links. Christmas is coming up, so please when you are shopping for those uh, special ones in your family, please use our affiliate links to support the show. Wicked Cuts Jerky, in the Golf.com, DC4L Custom Tees, Pro-Am Customs, and ChaiPoker.com all as well. We, we thank them. Please support them so they can continue to support us. All right. So, gents, let's, without further ado, go over the standings, which I have in front of me. Uh, Spike sent me over all the information here. So... After eight weeks of the season, Spike, we can go past this because I know he would take two or three minutes to gloat about this. So Spike's got 24 points out of a total possible 40. Uh, Token, you are in second. Again, I'll say it every week, surprisingly, uh, with 23 (laughs) points. I have to say that uh, if I don't win this contest, I would rather give you my money than Spike. 110%. Fair enough. So, all right. And uh, third place with 16 points, Mr. Tony Johnson. And myself bringing up the rear with 13 points, including an 0-5 <laughs> week. 
Uh, that's me, the host. So, Tony, we've got some work to do. but Quite uh, a bit. Quite a bit, yes. Saying we're going to have this 500 week. I haven't – I've been over 500 one week. What about you? <laughs> I think it's one. Two. I think I had one. Maybe I had two, three, and two weeks, maybe, but I, I, I don't remember, honestly. It's maybe two, maybe. You know, and – I don't want to take away any kind of credibility because you do this for a living and obviously you're just having a tough season, but what do you chalk it up to? I mean, I don't mean to sound disrespectful or anything, but you yeah. generally over the course of not even the podcast, just the time I've known you have been very successful at the NFL. What do you attribute this season to? I mean, obviously the easy low hanging fruit is COVID, but sure. I mean, it's just gotta be a tough, it's gotta be tough. Cause I've seen some, I've seen some picks you've had that, 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 that have just been getting beat in the worst ways. Very badly, yes. Uh, well, surprisingly, it, it's kind of funny you bring it up. Uh, you know, it wasn't something I was going to talk about necessarily, but it's, it's actually been my most profitable NFL season to date, and it's mostly because uh, betting on a lot of props. Um, we've, uh, I, I do some, uh, some parlay card and teaser card stuff out here in, La, in Las Vegas as well, which can be pretty profitable late, you know, right before game starts and things like that. So I, I think it comes down to more like betting on Friday lines. You know, we're using one book on Friday and, uh, most of the NFL bets I've made this year have come on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So, uh, I'm kind of out in front of a few lines. It, it has helped a little bit here and there. Um, but yeah, I mean, to your point, Aaron, you know, it's, uh, I think it, it, it just goes to show you even more so that it's, it's a humbling thing. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's hard to pick sides and totals in the NFL. It's just, it's a really, really tough, tight market. Um, you know, and we have it set up, you know, to be difficult, which I think is good. You know, I'm, I'm not, it's not a complaint in the least. I don't want it to sound like a complaint at all. I, I think it's a, it's a tough challenge and a tough contest. So, um, you know, I had a strategy coming in as well that I didn't want to move off of any key numbers uh, because we're moving down a half a point. So I didn't want to move off of any sevens or any threes, um, even any tens. I didn't, I, I kind of want to stay away from tens and that takes you out of some games, you know, on a weekly basis. So, uh, and totals, I'm only calling the halves. Uh, so like any total that's on an, on a whole number, at least through week seven, uh, I didn't bet on that one either because I didn't want to give up that half a point. So that was a strategy coming in and obviously hasn't worked. So <laughs> I have nothing to, you know, more to say about it. But I think that's probably more the reasoning. Um, but that doesn't excuse the fact that I've had a lot of bad picks. So, you know, no, I mean, nothing, like I, said, uh, nothing I don't know if they're bad. I just think they're just getting beat in the, the most gloriously unsat or unsatisfying ways. Yeah, yeah. A lot of second half uh, losses. Yeah, it's been, it's been a little frustrating in that sense. But um yeah, you know, it is what it is. And as you said, you know, a 5-0 and week, you know, here and then followed up by a couple more winning weeks, and you can get yourself right back into these things because you never know. I mean, Spike can hang a couple of bad ones too, you know, with the best of them. So uh, I, I'm not calling this thing yet. Yeah, we are definitely hoping for that. I'd love them to hang like 4 or 5 oh, in five weeks, like back-to-back. -back, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would like to not go 17 weeks as the only one who went 0-5. And I will say this, I don't want to disqualify my entry into this contest, but that week <laughs> I went 0-5 was the week I got married, so I did not even look at anything. So Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't want to say that it, – it's not an excuse. It was just kind of – that was the week I was like, whatever, these five games look good. So, All right, just a reminder, all of the games that we pick, again, they are Friday lined. We do have to move them. They are the ones that are currently active at the Westgate Superbook. All odds provided by that Westgate Superbook, which got some competition now. I don't know if anybody's out there listening. When you come into Vegas, the Circa Sportsbook is uh, glorious, for lack of a better word. Uh, we went over there, checked it out. It's a, it's a fancy-looking book, and it's definitely given the Westgate Las Vegas a run for their money. I still like the what the Westgate Las Vegas does in terms of options and action, but uh, – We'll see what Circa does. But. All right, uh, let's go ahead and dive into the games. We're going to start with Seattle and Buffalo, a very good early game here. Uh, Seattle going on the road, going west to east, a three-point favorite. The total is 55, a uh, big number here. But Seattle has been known to, to put up some points, like you said, uh, DeWald, uh, token. <laughs> I called you that in a while. But, yeah. uh, token. Um, but, you know, this is an interesting one. Uh, what do you think about this one? Seattle laying a field goal on the road, having to go across the country. In my opinion, it's a pretty good line, especially because Seattle's defense looks might, – might be even 
as bad as the running game, as you said earlier. And it's, I, I, especially a Buffalo game with this high of a total, it kind of seems really odd, especially in Buffalo. But, I mean, the weather looks pretty decent around there. It's going to be actually probably one of the games in the morning to kind of keep an eye on, in my opinion. It could be two teams that could possibly even meet in the Super Bowl, but I think that's a little far-fetched to say. But Seattle's looking good to compete for the NFC for sure. So, Well, a couple of things here I'm interested in, in looking at, uh, Tony, is you're right. Uh, Token said it. You know, Seattle's defense has been pretty atrocious. Last week, though, they uh, – before the garbage time, I mean, through three quarters, they had only allowed 117 yards and one score to the whatever's left of San Francisco 49ers. And they're getting back Jamal Adams after four games. And the big trade with Carlos Dunlap set to make his uh, uh, debut. And they're picking up Snacks Harrison, who's uh, probably going to try to get into game shape here in the next week or two. So the defense could be a thing, you know, not just an afterthought here in the next couple of weeks, but, and even today, you know, you talked, we talked about it off before we recorded, you know, and Buffalo in November could get ugly, but we might have uh, sunny skies here too. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with everything you said. And, and I do think this defense will probably start to turn a little bit. Uh, I'm not quite sure it's going to happen right away right now in this week. Uh, uh, a little, uh, preview here this was the last the last one in for me which we'll go over of course later our picks but uh had to come up with something uh at least for the, to round it out and I, I thought this was a good enough spot if there was to be one and uh you know you're right Aaron I, I do think it's been atrocious uh for them but as the season moves on and I, and I think uh they get all the guys that they want you know to really be on the field you know there's been so many injuries as you talked about that um you know, I think it'll get a lot better, uh, especially with the cornerback position, which they're still going to miss one or two guys here this week. Uh, but having Jamal Adams at, uh, at safety will, will certainly help. But, um, you know, it, it's an interesting game because we expected so much different from this Buffalo team, you know, before we expected them to be a defense first kind of team. And instead we saw Josh Allen really play so well for the first four or five weeks and the defense play so poorly uh, in general. And now we've kind of gotten a little bit of a reversal here. We've got the Josh Allen sort of of his, you know, first couple of seasons, it seems like uh, back. Uh, they have not played very well the last few weeks. So um, I think it's a big game. And I think Token made a good point, you know, that this is something to watch uh, here for sure. Let's see if we start to see the tide turning for Seattle, uh, you know, defensively, or, or if Buffalo can put a game together uh, on both sides of the ball. Cause they haven't really even put a, a full game together on both sides of the ball yet this season. So um, I really do think it's an interesting game on both sides. Yeah. We'll have to see what that one, cause I think this might be the game of the morning in my opinion. So we'll mm -hmm. have to see how that all kind of goes. All right, let's move forward to Denver. Going west to east at Atlanta, uh, Denver coming off, of course, that big comeback that probably shocked a lot of people, even though it is the Chargers, and I know they are the king of the, the letdowns uh, along sharing the throne with Atlanta, ironically, who they're playing this week. So uh, Atlanta's holding a four-and-a-half point uh, edge here. They're the favorites. Total is 50 at the West Gate. Um, I'm not sure what to think about this one, to be honest with you. I, I – I kind of sat on it for a while. This was one for me that, that sat between that last one in, first one out kind of thing. Uh, I think Denver Denver showed flashes last week that they could have some offense. They came back from 21 points down. Um, and if they need to do that again while they're sitting on the only other team that will let them do it, it seems like, in the NFL, other than the Chargers, that's the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I don't know if Atlanta looked good against Carolina the last time we saw them. They looked good enough. The, the was pouring down rain, just an ugly game. Uh, but they are 2-1, and one, which you mentioned on the midweek podcast under new interim coach Raheem Morris. Uh, it just seems like they're not getting touchdowns despite all the explosive guys on offense. It seems like they're having to settle for, you know, stalled drives. I don't know. It's just an interesting one here. I, I don't love anything about – wanting to watch this game token. I, I, uh, I do have a play on this, but I had to hold my nose and kind of go with this fifth option because like Tony said about his fifth option, we got to put five in there. Exactly. And this one, unless if you probably have young Ho Ku on your fantasy team, you're probably <laughs> not going to watch teams. this. I have him on two of my team. He's been, he's been lights out this year. Wow. Yeah. He's, there was one week in our crazy league I had him, and he put up 85 points. 
It is a crazy league, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have had him. I drafted Matt. I usually try to draft Matt Prater in all my leagues. Well, you know, I, I, I dropped him in both leagues really quickly. And, yes, Young Hue, not Young Ho. We have to get oh, his okay. Name right. uh, Young Hue oh. Ku, which it does look like Young Ho, so I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to pull there. Uh, yeah, he had some struggles with the Chargers when he came out of college. But maybe – he went to Georgia State. I looked him up. And maybe just being in the Georgia Dome and being comfortable around that area has maybe not made him as nervous. So, I don't know. That could be the, the, the kind of the catalyst that's being Young Hui's uh, positivity. Fair enough, yeah. It's the second time we've heard a, a Young Way Koo reference here in a, in a podcast in a week uh, out here. So, that's kind of nice uh, to, to see some kickers getting a little bit of love. But – yeah, I mean, I'm with you guys. I, uh, you know, it's a bit of an ugly game. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest here, and I really didn't uh, want to have much to do with this one. But uh, you know, I, I thought something stuck out uh, a little bit, and, and I, you know, while I, I, I do support the notion that I think Atlanta has uh, played a lot better here under the new uh, Raheem Morris regime, and you know, getting a lot of their defensive defensive players back, they are not a complete zero uh, now on defense. Um, I, I do think it's a team that. I don't want to be laying a lot of points with, you know, it, it's, it's a tough spot. Yeah. When they're getting some points, maybe in, um, you know, at home or, or at least somewhere uh, in a divisional type of game. Yeah. That might make some sense of game they'll get up for, but when they have to lay points, you know, across uh, you know a, a different conference uh, team, it just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me, but you know, that uh, how Denver will respond after, after their win last week, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, it's still a team that you really can't, get a good consistent feel or at least I certainly can't uh, on a week in week out basis but um yeah we got a couple of coaches really playing for jobs here I think too uh long term I'm not quite sure where uh where they stand uh, now with Raheem Morris I think he still ha- has a viable chance you know for that job and um certainly in Denver I think it's it's been a revolving door there the last four or five years and uh, uh another decision I think coming uh, by the end of the year so what would you put his chances at? I, I really think unless he somehow goes undefeated and gets a wild card, I don't, I don't think he's the guy. I mean, I would agree. I would agree. I, it's, not, it's not the guy I would, I would want to choose. Um, you know, I just don't know. Without a GM, I don't think they have a GM because he fired Dimitrov as well. So, you know, we'll see where Arthur Blank goes and, you know, how the hiring process is. Does he go coach first and then a GM or kind of the GM and then they find a guy? You know, I'm not really sure, but – I would guess the Raheem Morris retread, although while sometimes the second time around can be really, really beneficial uh, for a coach, I'm not quite sure that he's the guy that they're looking for. Yeah, we'll see if, uh, like you said, the last eight games, if he still seems overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed in Tampa, trust me, followed that. Uh, but let's see if the next eight games he seems to have learned from yeah. I guess, the mistakes. Uh, the first thought that popped in my head was you can't, when you talked about that, you can't, I don't think you can really do coach than GM because – then the, the coaches, if you got the GM and the coach and they butt heads, then the, GM, right. the coach is never the GM's guy and it's easy to get rid of. But I'm interested to see if they bring on um, Eric Bieniemy to try to maybe get what's left out of Matt Ryan in his late 30s here. So it'll be an interesting one because he's the guy that everybody's been talking about who's been calling plays in Kansas City. And I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So. All right, Chicago at Tennessee. Uh, battle of some weirdly good record teams, but they're both, uh, they both got some question marks uh, after the last couple of weeks. Uh, Chicago, everybody keeps saying it every week. They're the worst X and X team. They're, the, they're, they're, they're flawed. You know, who do you go with BDN or Mitch Trubisky? I don't know. And then Tennessee looked really good. Start beating teams. They should have beat teams bad like Buffalo. And then would give them the close loss against, uh, against Pittsburgh. And then we got a kind of a head scratcher against Cincinnati. Uh, but they are, Currently home favorites of six and a half, total 47 in this game. Um, I'm not sure where we go with this one because I feel like since Chicago has the ability to, to be in games that they're not supposed to be in. I mean, on the road, they're three and one against the spread. They're going into a team or going into Tennessee, the team that's not really playing high level defense right now. Um, they can, they can definitely, they can definitely do that. They've got the team to do it. but. Um, I think the defense is a liability right now in Tennessee and the kicking game while Goskowski has kicked some big kicks, not only this season, but obviously in his career, uh, he's also missed uh, a pretty, some pretty decisive kicks this year. 
and I'm not sure how they feel about being that confident in the running in the kicking game. Uh, I say it every week. He continues to prove me wrong. But Ryan Tannehill is keeping this team afloat, and he's looking really good doing it week in and week out. Uh, Adam Gase, you should really watch that because you might need to uh, find a guy who actually you don't fuck up. But uh, Token, we got six and a half here with BDN and Ryan Tannehill, and the total is 47. Yeah, I mean, this one just screams ugly all around, no matter what side of the ball that you look at on this one. I mean, both defenses are good, but both play like shit at times. and. Can you really trust either offense against each particular defense that they're up against in this one? I mean, the thing that Tennessee has going for them is Tannehill and with Henry to open up the passing game. and But six and a half is a lot in this spot. But A.J. Brown's been huge this year, man. And then, uh, yeah. you know what? Tip of the cap to you, sir, picking Corey Davis in your DFS lineup last week. Yes. That was not nice. Nicely done. I agree. Yes. I hated yep. everything about that pick, but uh, <laughs> it proved you wrong. Well, <laughs> very much it, so. It, yeah. it, it might strike again this week, believe oh. it or not. Just oh, might, just, nice. might, we just might have another Corey Davis sighting in the DFS. Especially if Humphrey's out this week for Tennessee. So, yeah, stay tuned for that at the end of the show. Uh, Tony Johnson, we got, like I said, Tannehill versus BDN. You sit here again, you wear the Bears hat. Uh, I will tell you, Chicago is a team I cannot wrap my mind around, but yet I have actually put bets on them, and I'm 3-1 and one on bets with them nice. this year. I, I, I tailed them uh, in Tampa, and uh, the only game I've lost with them is that first game that, that uh, Tokens Lions blew the game. I should have won that bet. So I should be 4-0 and with them this year. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, very true. I mean, it's a it's a team that you it's one of those classic teams you like getting points with, but you don't really want to be giving points, uh, you know, all that often because it's just tough. You know, while nothing against Nick Foles, you know, per se overall, he just doesn't move very well. He really, really can't get out of the pocket anymore. And it's a problem. You know, if there's any sort of pass rust that ha- on a consistent basis, it's a team, it, the team's going to struggle uh, on offense. And there's not, it doesn't matter what play is called. I don't think the play calling has been great either. But even in you call the most perfect play, if you don't have any time in the pocket and the guy can't move, uh, it's, it's a disaster. But um, I knew we were giving some kickers some love here. Uh, I'd like to give a, a little punter uh, a shout out here. Uh, Brett Kern going to miss this game for Tennessee. Uh, I think pretty clearly the best punter in the NFL over the last couple of seasons. And um, I know it's not baked into the line. Maybe it shouldn't be. But uh, I think this matters a little bit. I think this this matters at least a quarter, maybe a half a point. Um, the guy's incredible at, at, uh, at putting the ball deep. And, um, you know, he flips fields better than almost anybody uh, in the NFL. So uh, they had a kicker tryout today, actually, on Friday, just to get a guy uh, ready to go for Sunday. And, um, you know, it's not ideal. Not an ideal spot if you have to lay six and a half points. Uh, you know, this was the last one out for me. Um, I, I came close to taking the Bears here, getting six and a half. I think Token made a good point. It's just so many points. Um, you know, w- without an offense that really can dominate and throw a ton of points very quickly on the board, you know, these are long drives that Tennessee is going on. And while well, it's great and they win a lot of games, uh, it, I, I don't want to be on a team like that to cover a big, uh, big number. So, uh, you know, a strong lean here with Chicago, um, but uh, it just didn't make my card this week. That's fair enough. I, I actually was considering Chicago plus the six and a half as well. And I work in an area where I hear a lot of chatter, especially about sports and sports betting. And everybody loved Chicago six and a half. And I think that actually Ooh, pushed. That's scary. Pushed you off. <laughs> yes. Out of, of, of really liking it. So fair uh, enough. Yeah, uh, you're right. It's your Chicago's that team. I'd love to take points. I just don't love to give them. And this is a spot where you would love to take Chicago in a six and a half. So that's fair. All right, Detroit and Minnesota. This is a key game here for a lot of reasons. Uh, We talked about Minnesota and Detroit on the midweek podcast, the midseason recap. Uh, So we're going to look at that here in just a second. Minnesota is a four-point favorite, the total in this one, 52-and-a-half. Obviously, the big news is Matt Stafford or Stat Padford. Is he going to play? He was placed on the COVID-19 list on Wednesday, and he must – isolate for five days and can return as long as the tests uh he tests negative well five days is sunday so he's going to miss practice and traditionally if you miss a friday practice you're You're out out. yeah so that being said 
I'm surprised the line is there. Now, is that a credit to Chase Daniel because he's played enough games in the league? They think maybe he's decent enough to to keep this game close. I don't know. I wonder what their thought process is or where this line will move. So, Token, I'll start with you. I kind of want to – just to give a quick guess on – if you think this line moves when Chase Daniel is confirmed as a starter, Tony, you can answer the same. You can answer that same question. But I want to touch base real, real quick. Tony Johnson, this is the start of Minnesota getting back and winning that division. That's right. <laughs> yeah, because we I, talked about that. We said we're going to have a big, big. Uh, I still think seven and five by the time they play Tampa. Mm-hmm. Token, Minnesota's minus four currently. Yes, and. Even if Stafford plays, I think that's the correct line. But, however, I think if he gets denounced as the starter, starter and Daniel is, I think this game just completely gets taken off. It's not even available anymore. And I would be surprised if it's even why it's on the board now. I, I, I am shocked as well. And it, it's just something that baffles me. And It's it, on the board everywhere. Yeah. It's not like the Westgate just happens to have it. It's on the board everywhere. Yeah, it – it, it almost seems like a trap game, no matter what. F- fuck the Lions, fuck the Vikings, and it, it's going to come down to Green Bay or Chicago winning this division, unfortunately. But oh, you could have had a good rebuttal to our Wednesday podcast. That if yeah, because we all said that. Uh, or, or 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 if you still have faith in, the- in Minnesota, <laughs> or if you still have faith in Minnesota, if you could get got them at one twenty five to one to win the division coming into the last week. We even made a case for Detroit sneaking into a wild card. So we did that. That is more possible, I think. But I would still not light my money on fire. Let yeah. me ask you this here: uh, What we got for record wise here? I think what Detroit's three and three and four, four and Minnesota's two and five. All right. Yes. I'll make you a prop bet. Just ten bucks. If Minnesota wins this game and both, then what have we got? Three and well, both teams. Three and five. Three and five. I'll make you a prop bet on best rank, like the last eight games that they play. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll take it. And I get Minnesota. No, fuck off. You get Detroit. You're a Lions fan. Oh, hell no. I'm not going to take Detroit. What am I, stupid? Yes. <laughs> I'm not that retarded. Just ask yes or no questions if you don't want to hear the answer. <laughs> or don't ask yes or no questions if you don't want to. <laughs> True or false, it's. True. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, all right, Tony, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I mean, even besides the Stafford injury, uh, the, the one thing I noticed looking at that injury report is, you know, Minnesota's could be without four corners. Uh, they're already three for sure, and Harrison Hand is, is questionable and will be a game-time decision. Uh, they got away with it last week, uh, you know, getting out to a, a nice enough lead and, and able to hang on against Green Bay in the tough uh, wind weather. But, inside a dome here and if, if we do get a Stafford sighting um even without Kenny Galladay I know who I believe has been ruled out as well correct uh, I, yeah. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be tough um again I'm with you Aaron I do think it's certainly possible but they got to get some of these defensive backs healthy you just it, these guys they just can't cover people in general and uh you know this is not the team that I that I want to not have healthy corners against you know Stafford is a very quality quarterback uh in the second half of games I mean it's just historically that has shown to be the case now would we like him to be more of a full game guy yeah absolutely I'm not the biggest fan of his as I know you know we all kind of I think are pretty much in the same camp but certainly he has done well uh in the second half so I'm I'd be a bit scared of a backdoor type of situation here it was a game I just kind of avoided with all this injury and unknown thing and uh yeah I'm kind of I'm I'm with you guys it's uh it was just tough I decided to just sort of let it go well, to be fair, again, we talk about this schedule. With, with the corners being out and if Stat Patford is going to take a seat for this game, the corners will have a lot of time to get healthy, in my opinion. Again, Detroit with Chase Daniel is the first game on the schedule. Then they go at Chicago, could still yep. be Foles, could be Trubisky, Carolina, Jacksonville. So, I mean. I agree. Yep. They it's doable. time to get healthy. Mm-hmm. So, all right, fair enough. All right, another intriguing game here, Baltimore at Indianapolis. Um, well, if you remember, uh, Baltimore moved to Indianapolis, so the Colts of Baltimore. I wonder what people, old people in Baltimore are rooting for at this point. <laughs> the boomers, I guess you could say. Uh, it's a pick em. It's a little bit surprising. I think a lot of the lines and fans are down on Baltimore after 
what you talked about. I loved the text exchange between Tony Johnson and Spike on, you know, Spike gets a pick <laughs> right and somehow is able to justify it, despite the fact that, that that pick should never have won. <laughs> somehow it still justifies it. Uh, Tony, I was agreeing with you. I think Lamar Jackson's yeah. boneheaded mistakes in that game allowed Pittsburgh to get back into it. I think I was on the right side of that, but unfortunately that's not the way this works. Nope, it's not. <laughs> it's frustrating. Yeah, they don't. They, you don't get to walk up to the window and be like, I, "Well, I thought I was on. I, I was on the right <laughs> side of that bed." And they're like, "Oh yes, sir." That's kind of like the Rams last week too. Uh, yeah, kind of like yes, the, yes, kind of like the Browns. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, but you know what? To be fair to Spike, last week he nailed that that on the head because he said that Raiders will win if Josh Jacobs can run, you know, a bunch of times for a bunch of yards. And that's what he did. And he kept the ball away from Baker Mayfield and the Browns. So back to the Colts and the Ravens. Again, a pick them, total 48 in this one. Uh, I mean, the Ravens are, what, 5-2. and two. They've lost games to the Chiefs and the Steelers. I wonder if the talk in Baltimore, again, I don't listen to Baltimore Sports Talk Radio. I wonder if the talk in Baltimore is basically – you know, yeah, this team's good, but if they're ever going to compete with the big boys, they got to get on another level. So I wonder if this is kind of a fuck you game for the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. Now, the big thing is they just paid Ronnie Stanley $100 million, and he's gone for the season. And that's the left tackle that kept Lamar Jackson upright. Good defense in Indianapolis could exploit that. Um, on defense, the Ravens are losing Marlon Humphrey, a good cornerback. Uh, I just – really didn't know how to handicap this because after everything I just said, Lamar Jackson versus Phillip Rivers. Again, we still <laughs> be none of us like Phillip Rivers. So anytime I ever, ever get to a point in sports betting and football betting where I'm like, I think I'm gonna back Phillip Rivers, he fucks me. He fucks me. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like Cutler too, whether you bet for him or against him. First. I think I'm over <laughs> life on Cutler. <laughs> Fair enough. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, Baltimore's two losses are against the top two teams in the AFC. I mean, as well as this game has a lot of implications for AFC playoff position potentially too. Indy has one of the worst rushing defenses, though. Their secondary is decent, but with that top corner out, who knows what they're going to kind of look like. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough game. Um, you know, I, I was uh, listening to some uh, local stuff here, and uh, Tony Miller from uh, Golden Nugget and a few other guys uh, were talking about how this is the biggest handle they've had so far uh, up until today, and um, almost every ticket, it seems like, uh, they say, have been written um, on Indy. It's just uh, pretty nuts. In fact, some of the uh, the big offshore books have actually made Indy a favorite. They're now a one-point favorite, um, you know, out in the Caribbean. So, yeah, it's just crazy stuff how, you know, Baltimore opened as a four-point uh, fave. I really wasn't sure what to do uh, with this game. And then all of a sudden we're at a pick, basically. So, um, yeah, you know, but I, I'm still kind of with you guys. I, I, I couldn't find much of a spot either. Um, I do think that Baltimore is a much better team than people are, are giving them credit for. Um, you know, as Token said, giving their losses, you know, to really high quality teams. But I just – I don't know what to do with this. I love Indy's defense so much, but I really hate what's going on offensively for the most part. And, uh, you know, Phillip Rivers, he's, he not only does he not really have much of an arm anymore, but it's just the decision-making has been brutal. At least Drew Brees hangs on to the ball and isn't throwing it in bad spots. Uh, I mean, just – Rivers that, that's is brutal. That's very true, yeah. Uh, the it's, thing is, I mean, last week I know T.Y. Hilton got hurt, but he's got a great receiver. He's got a safety valve. Yeah. Even yeah. It's way. I, I agree. I agree. It's just, it's just a team I don't want to trust, although I love that defense. So mm -hmm. I don't know what to do uh, in this one. So, I, again, I passed. Uh, I know everyone and their brother seems to be on Indy here. I, I can't wrap my head around it, so I just – I left it alone. I don't know. This feel, I'm not on it either, but it's, this just feels – it, it does. Everybody and their brother. It, this just feels like Kansas or uh, Baltimore's going to come out with a, a big middle finger. Yeah. Like we talked about Aaron Rodgers too. All right, uh, moving forward, Carolina at Kansas City. Now, I really like Carolina. Uh, I think they're up the deck stacked against them in this one. I like Teddy Bridgewater. I think Matt Rule has turned into uh, turned a lot of things positive really quickly in Carolina after the sour ending to the Cam Newton era. But uh, they're double digit dogs here and correct me if I'm wrong oh no the Dallas is the big dog of the week but they 
They're a big dog as well here at the Panthers. The 10 and a half against the reigning champs at Kansas City. 52 and a half is the total at the Westgate. Um, you talked about a token, Pat Mahomes, in the conversation for that midseason MVP and probably the end of the season MVP. It it seems like, and I know it was the Jets last week, but it seems like they're just they're just having fun out there. You know, they're a really good team. They don't face a lot of adversity. And when they do, like the Chargers game early in the year, they just find a way to get back into it. I mean, where do you – who do you guard? You got Kelsey. You got Hilaire. Le'Veon Bell, he's an option. Tyreek Hill. Sammy Watkins when he's healthy. McCall Hardman. They just got so many ways to kick you right in the dick. And the defense is good. And now if they can get Chris Jones to play this week, that obviously makes them even that much better. Uh, the, the thing here I'm looking at is, and I don't know if it really is going to matter, Christian McCaffrey may come back. I believe he is listed as questionable, but I guess he's trending towards coming back. He's missed the last six weeks. He's fucked over a lot of fantasy teams. Um, I don't imagine he's going to come to – Matt Rule's going to bring him back guns blazing. So I really had a hard time kind of ranking this one. Um, the Panthers are really not good in the red zone. They are almost last in the league, only converting 50% of their opportunities, and that's touchdowns and field goals. So I feel like Carolina is going to get blown out in this game, but maybe Christian McCaffrey can do something here, Token, if he plays. Maybe, and if he plays, he's definitely on a short leash and – maybe even out on those red zone opportunities and letting Davis kind of do some of the lake work. I mean, this Kansas city defense is going to be tough to run against and, but Carolina might be able to make it close. I mean, this, this one just screams bad news bears all around. In my opinion, the total, even, even like the spread, I mean, even with the hook in there, it just, it, it, doesn't make sense at all. Well, that was the thing. It seemed to me, if I was looking at this game, I was actually, I wiped out the 10 and a half. The under looked kind of enticing to me, Tony. Yeah, I don't disagree with that one. It was, it was a thought uh, myself for sure. Uh, this is one of the few games I actually have bet. Uh, so that's kind of exciting, but um, yeah, I think it's a, it's an interesting spot here. As you guys kind of noted, um, you know, since we don't really know what's going on with the uh, Christian McCaffrey situation and, while Mike Davis has been a fantastic player uh, in his absence, um, you know, you still get uh, quite a bit more uh, with, with McCaffrey and the unknown, I think whether he plays uh, or not is, is interesting. And he's, and it's tough to prepare for uh, on the Kansas city front. And then um, again, on the injury report, I, I took a bit of a deep dive uh, here and, and noticed that uh, while a uh, great nose tackle, Chris Jones for uh, Kansas city is noted to play and he's actually off the injury report. Um, he is not a hundred percent still. He, he didn't really play, uh, you know, all the way last week. Uh, I think he only played about half the snaps roughly. And, um, you know, I just, I think that's a bit of an issue, uh, depending on if, you know, McCaffrey is here or not. And, um, you know, Frank Clark is going to be a game time decision. Who's I think by far their best pass rusher on defense as well. Um, he's trending towards not playing from the last thing that I read, uh, here on Rotowire. So, you know, I think these are two pretty big spots, uh, as well. And then we add into the fact there's a little bit of about the only game that has a little bit of weather attached to it. Um, we should get some, uh, some wind gusts here, uh, above 20 miles an hour throughout. And I think Carolina already having a really high quality pass defense, um, really one of the better ones in the league, uh, great secondary, I think will only help uh, in this sense. And it's just, to me, it looks like it's a bit of a tall order uh, to try to pluck a big number here uh, with Kansas city with kind of, kind of a few things working against them. But um, you know, again, uh, I'm like what I've seen from Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, you know, I, we, we kind of expected this Carolina team to sort of be like this throughout the year. It's a tough, hard nosed Matt rule uh, style team, but you know, can they keep up with the big boys and can they keep up with all that talent? You know, as you talked about Aaron is, is always a tough task uh, when the best quarterback in the game is, is on the other side. That's fair. It's going to be an interesting one to see if Carolina can keep it close. I don't think they can win, but I'll see if they can keep it close. Again, in that 10 and a half point range is a dangerous betting option. All right. Houston at Jacksonville, Houston, a seven point favorite coming off a bye. Uh, Jacksonville, the Jaguars are one and six on the year as well as the Texans. 
And uh, we are not getting Mustache Minshew. We are getting another rookie, another six-round pick who will be taking his first snaps of the season. Jake, I'm going to go with Luton instead of Luton. I don't know if it's Lutton. Uh, the rookie out of Oregon State will uh, be lining up under center, pretty much probably going to be handing off as much as he can to James Robinson this week. Uh, again, the total uh, in this one is 50 and a half. Houston, a seven-point road favorite. Not really loving the fact that Houston is laying that big. They're not that good themselves. Their defense is absolutely atrocious. And like I said, despite the fact that the Jaguars are one and six, they have been able to put up points now. Can they do the same thing with Luton? Uh, We'll see. But James Robinson, I think, has been the uh, surprise of the year, fantasy-wise and uh, just in general. Um, Deshaun Watson coming off a bye is 3-1 and in his career. So that's a good thing. Um, So that being said, all of that being said, I still don't love – the thought of Houston having to go down into Jacksonville and beat this team. There's a thing called beginner's luck, and I really hope Luton does not uh, experience that. <laughs> I, I, I think this is maybe an opportunity for him to have that beginner's luck, though. I mean, this Houston defense is not good. This even might be – the worst defense in the league if it weren't for J.J. Watt. And there's even talks about them even trying to ship him for something right now. Well, it'll have to be after the year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, uh, quarterback here. I, I, I do watch quite a bit of Pac-12 football, um, you know, each and every year. And, uh, you know, Jake was, was more of a game manager, was more of just kind of a, a grinded out sort of guy, uh, you know, an accurate passer, but really not, a, not much in the arm department. And, um, you know, they really ran a very limited amount of routes over there in Oregon State. So it's, it's an interesting um, decision. You know, I'm not really sure what goes into it. I know that, you know, Doug Marone's press conference before the bye week was a little bit crazy. And uh, he talked about just doing a bunch of things and mixing it up and sort of going for it, if you will. I mean, I don't, I don't know why he wouldn't. Um, certainly his job uh, uh, is definitely on the line. But, you know, there's a point of a diminishing return, certainly, too, when you're starting guys that may not be really NFL quarterbacks. Uh, I just don't know. It's, um, you know, again, my, my take on it is he was a nice enough quality you know, Pac-12 quarterback for a media, middling, mediocre team, but I, I couldn't see him really at the next level, whatever level that would be. Uh, you know, but do you want to lay seven points with the dumpster fire of Houston? You know, no, you really don't. So uh, I, I'm with you guys. I mean, this game sucks, you know, on all levels. Uh, there's a reason these teams have both won one game each. Uh, I don't like anything about either one, you know, maybe besides Sean Watson, you know, who's really having a nice season, you know, for for such a bad situation that he's in, to be honest. Uh and I feel like he's handled it extremely well, too. I'm actually uh, really impressed uh, with the quality of play from, from Watson overall. But, you know, besides that, the only bright spot here, it's a game I'm going to be passing on not only betting-wise, but watching. That's a fair assessment. I think that's probably the right thing to do, and there's better options. Speaking of passing, the right thing to do, uh, the Giants and the football team. Washington is a two-and-a-half-point home favorite. Against the Giants, who we saw give uh, Tampa Bay a little bit of a run for their money on Monday night. Uh, the total in this one is 43. I will not be watching this, but, uh, you know, I have to say this, Token. Normally, a team that's 2-5 and five is probably looking towards next year or kind of figuring out what they have in the locker room and at the coach. Obviously, Ron Rivera is not going to get fired after one year. But they're in contention for a division title. (laughs) Uh, They are basically a game and a half back of the Eagles here at this point. And uh, beating the Giants is a huge step. Who who cannot win games, cannot win close games. And Danny Dimes seems to be a turnover machine as much as Mike, uh, from Mike said at first, seems to just, uh, what do we use, what's the word? Ball wash, Daniel Jones. (laughs) Nice. Uh, but uh, Washington coming off a of bye week. Um, to, and uh, before that, they beat, uh, what was it, Dallas pretty handedly, too, uh, in, the, uh, in the Andy Dalton game there. So Kyle Allen, I'm, I'm not going to go back to loving Kyle <laughs> Allen, but he's doing enough to keep them in contention for the division, Token. 
It, it might be just enough to keep them in contention. And this division, although it might be close in regards to standings, it's definitely not the best division in football, like Spike said. So, <laughs> Well, the crazy thing is, if you look at this, I mean, we're playing the hindsight game. The first time these two teams met, the Giants won 20-19 for their only win. But Ron Rivera went for two. And yes. he obviously gambled unsuccessfully, uh, Mr. Riverboat Ron. Uh, so who knows what could have happened in that. This team could be, uh, what is that, three and four. And only that tie would be the difference between second and first place in the NFC East. It's yeah, still I, crazy I, to say that. I, I remember him going against, I think it was Detroit last year. He went for two in a game where an uh, extra point would have tied the game with a little time left. But he went for two pretty much to get the win, and it failed. But Tony, what do you, Tony, what do you make of that? A lot of these guys are doing these kind of unorthodox things, and then – whether it works or not, they're like, you know, they're, they're, the buzzword is analytics. Well, I, I think there's a specific time and place and situation and, uh, you know, maybe offense as well where, where it might be better uh, than worse. Um, I think it's a really, really bad decision to do it when there's about a minute or more left on the clock, uh, that which is an eternity, uh, as we know, uh, in these games. Um, you want it to be one of, if not the last plays um, and make it count and make sure it's, a, it's nearly a guaranteed win. But uh, there have been some coaches that have done it with 40, 45, 50 seconds, and I, I totally disagree. Even that, that time where it's not quite a minute, I think that's a really, really bad decision. Uh, and then if it's a team, you know, where you haven't shown a lot of offense, you haven't run the ball that well, you don't, you don't have a dynamic quarterback, I think it's a really, really bad decision uh, overall. You know, why are you trying to call on one of the, you know, worst parts of your team, you know, to win a game for you? It just doesn't make a whole lot of logical sense, in my opinion. So, you know, again, I, I think it's good in some other spots. You know, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State uh, uh, reminds me, you know, that, that happened. They did, they, they've both done it to each other, I believe, over the last three years. But that makes a lot of sense. Those are 75 totals. Both offenses are great. You know, that's the type of spot where, I, you know, I want to try to win a game late with, what, with what's the best thing on the field for me. So, okay. that's fair. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of, uh, of just doing it to do it. Uh, and Ron Rivera is not the greatest on field coach. He, he makes a lot of these kind of dumb decisions. Um, he's really, he's really, no, he's really a good X's and O's coach. I think he's shown that over the years. He just, you know, he has this riverboat Ron mentality and while it's, you know, good and well, and he, some things it's are aggressive. Of quality, Shit it's just, it's fired. aggressive for no reason. Yeah. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's the shit that gets you fired. All right, moving on, Las Vegas and the L.A. Chargers. I tell you what, if you asked me this four years ago, which of those two teams would have came to Las Vegas, I would have said the Chargers rather than the over the Raiders for mm-hmm. personal reasons and the fact that I thought yeah. Vegas would – or I guess I thought the Raiders would try to move back to L.A. But unfortunately, we've got, we've got the Raiders here traveling to L.A. in the new SoFi Stadium to play the Chargers. It is a pick 'em. The total is 52 in this game. Token, we talked about this, the Atlanta Falcons blowing leads. The Chargers are trying to be the bell of the ball when it comes to that. They have blown 16-plus point leads in the last four games. They had a 21-point lead last week. They had a 24-7 lead over Tampa Bay. They had a 21-3 lead in New Orleans. And they had a uh, – they had a 29-20 or they had a they had a 16-0 lead and then eventually lost that lead against the Jaguars before rallying to a victory. But they have blown leads, even in wins. Yeah. Now they are yeah. two. Go ahead. Oh, it, it seems like they're taking lessons from the Falcons this year almost, how to win games. So. Well, I talked about this with Tony on the pod. And in the beginning of the season, I took Anthony Lynn at 33-1 to to win Coach of the Year. And if he could literally just hold on to those leads, their two and five record would be five and two. And I think that bet might be active. I, I bet him to win the division just in case Mahomes mm-hmm. got hurt. And really, that's, I know that's not all about my bet, but it's like, dude, how do, you, how do you lose leads like that in the NFL? I mean, I know it's, it's not like basketball where everybody makes a run. I mean, they have a decent defense. They've just been blowing shit. And, the, and the, especially against the Broncos, 21 points to a team that's led by Drew Locke. I mean, come on. 
Uh, again, that being said, this game is a pick 'em. I don't know how I feel about this one. After Las Vegas is convincing victory on the road against Cleveland, had some good victories. I mean, this one's a stumper. This feels like a trap line. It, it kind of does. I mean, it's a divisional game. Both of these teams should play hard, but who knows with Gruden's coaching capabilities as well as the Chargers with uh, who is it, Herbert? Uh, behind the center and his talents against this Raiders defense. It, it's going to be a good one to watch. I mean, this is probably my second favorite of the afternoon slate for sure. So. Now, Tony, is this a pick em because of the uh, a lot of the injuries in, in Oakland and the COVID stuff? I think that has something to do with it. Absolutely, yes. Um, I was trying to figure it out myself. And, um, yeah, especially since we don't know about uh, Josh Jacobs, uh, who I think is the most well-known player, especially, you know, on that offensive side, who, uh, you know, while he hasn't had the, the uh, as quality of a season as he had last year, I think that's a bit more of an unknown uh, as well. And, yeah, I mean, uh, I just think not a lot of people can get a handle uh, on this Raiders team. And, and, and I'm right alongside – pretty much uh i think most others you know really high quality wins over new orleans um a really big time win at kansas city uh and then uh you know really kind of stuffed in the browns face last week in a, in a tough win game you know you kind of expected that to be uh you know close back and forth certainly I, I thought that cleveland would end up prevailing and then cleveland was just not in the ball game the last two and a half quarters uh but that's the same team that gets blown out by tampa bay that gets really crushed by a new england team that doesn't appear to be very good this year um, and then didn't play well against Buffalo at home. It's, uh, you know, what do we do with this? I, I, I don't know. That's all one team right there. I, I, I don't know what to do. Um, you know, I respect John Gruden and his coaching ability for sure. Uh, I was high on them last year. I, I thought they would be a, you know, a decent quality team this year, and they sort of have been, at least by record and, you know, the statistical profile, but I have no idea what to do with them. So I am passing on the Raiders until uh, I know more, which may not ever happen. Uh, so it's just going to be a hard pass going forward. All right, that's fair enough. Again, I just feel this line super trappy, but if Jacobs doesn't play, that could justify that a little bit. All right, Pittsburgh and Dallas going into Jerry World. Pittsburgh is the big favorite. Tip of the cap to me. I think we talked about this on text to set the line on this game, and I said I think I said 13 and a half or 14. And yeah, you did, yeah. Biggest line of the week here. Um, Pittsburgh is looking to go 8-0 and for the first time in franchise history. I mean, think of a team that's – you know, got a ton of history of, of winning and excellent success. And they've never been 8-0 in, the, in, in, their, in their franchise's history. Pretty sure that's going to happen here in 2020. <laughs> the question really is, who's going to start for the Dallas Cowboys? Ben DiNucci has basically been demoted after the <laughs> hit show last week. Andy Dalton is not going to play. So Mike McCarthy, who's done fantastically awful, by the way, this year. I know that there's been a lot of shit that has not uh, has been out of his control. Uh, I still, just a side tangent, don't want to really get into it, but I still think it's a very telling thing when Andy Dalton got crushed and no one did a single thing about it in this team. Um, that being said, we've got our choices of Cooper Rush and Garrett Gilbert. I'll give you a dollar if you can name where either of them went to uh, college token. I'll take a shot in the dark and say Gilbert went to Buffalo. No. Okay. I think I think I can do both. I can do one. Okay. Uh, Cooper Garrett Rush, Gilbert. you got that one? No. Garrett Gilbert started at Texas. Texas. And transferred to SMU. Oh, I forgot about the transfer to SMU. I already got in Texas. Cooper uh, Rush, I think, was Eastern Washington? I want to say the chips. I think it was Central Michigan, I believe. Central Michigan? Okay. I believe. Right. I'm not 100% I, I actually on. think it was Central, yeah. yeah. That one I'm, I'm more I, – I forgot about the SMU, yeah, with uh, Gilbert. I remember Texas yeah. for sure because he came in when – what's his name? Got hurt in like the national championship or a big game. McCoy got hurt. McCoy, he, yeah, yeah. He was Mr. Texas all football, and then when McCoy moved on, yeah. uh, he was supposed to be the guy. It never materialized. I don't know what happened, but he ended up being at SMU and actually balled out at SMU. Probably got yeah. Pros. Um, anyways, not to spend too much time on the carousel that is Dallas Cowboy quarterback <laughs> currently. Uh, but uh, we got 14 points here, Token. The total is 43 
This smells like a blowout. Can Dallas score? Can they get in field goal range? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They still have a lot of talent on offense, no matter who starts at quarterback. They should at least be able to get the ball near the red zone at least once, maybe twice, if not maybe sneak in once. So, I mean, you still have Zeke at running back. That should open up the pass game, let alone he might be able to throw the ball. Why not give him a try? He might have to. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So. Yeah, this one's definitely the most interesting game on this time slate. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> that's a <strip>. yes. <laughs> I, I, if you watch it, let me know how it goes because it's uh, it's already actually a bet I, I've made on the game, but I have really not a lot of interest in watching it. Um, you know, uh, uh, first of all, I think it was a funny of note uh, that I found this out that uh, Dallas could be the first team in NFL history since we know of point spreads uh, to go zero and nine. Yes, uh, to start the year, which is really remarkable. It's only happened a couple times where teams have started zero and eight, but uh, and I think it's a legit chance uh, to go and nine. There's no reason they have to cover two touchdowns here, um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm a little bit worried, uh, actually, with Pittsburgh having that nice come-from-behind victory and, you know, their big rivalry game last week. Uh, and then they have a division opponent upcoming. Uh, well, but it's only Cincinnati next week. It's still a division game. And I'm a little bit worried that this actually kind of gets put on the back burner a bit. They know they're facing a quarterback that's not really an NFL, you know, caliber guy. Uh, you know, normally this would be a big, I think this could be a big time thing if this was a, a normalish sort of Dallas team, you know, that had a winning record. Yeah, would, they would be up for it, but I'm not sure they will be. Uh, I don't know. It's a scary situation there. So I ended up finding a play uh, on this one, which we'll talk about later, but uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't really know. If Pittsburgh obviously decides they want to play, yeah, they can sort of name the score, but just still not sure it's going to happen. He's still got Ben Roth for the other side. I think he'll do enough. I think they're going to win this game, obviously. But, sure, uh, sure. The 14, and that thing could push up here. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. That thing could really push up. And I guess the real question, Tony, would be they're, they're making it 14 based on we don't know who the quarterback is. Does right. Garrett Gilbert leave it at 14 and Cooper Rush move it further? Or I mean, are they just equally shit? I don't know. I, I don't have an answer. I wish I uh, had a thought. I what think would you probably... do if you were the bookmaker, if Cooper Rush is named the starter? You move it further? Probably. I, I probably move it a little bit further. I think Gilbert probably gives you a little bit more option. I know at least back in his college days, especially the SMU, I think that was Sonny Dykes. Uh, you know, certainly he is known to be able to air it out. Uh, I, I'm just not sure about Cooper Rush. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, it might be worth a bit. Um, I'd have to think about it. I, I really don't know. And hopefully I'd have a decent answer. It's an odds maker because sort of the job depends on it. But uh, <laughs> for now, I don't know. Does Dallas fire Mike McCarthy at the end of the year? No. That's interesting. No, I, I would say absolutely not. I mean, you, you got to give him at least a little lean for Prescott going out. But I just wonder because now we wonder the, the, what's going to materialize with the career of Dak Prescott. I mean, there's a chance now. What are they? What what are, what are, what is Dallas? Two in. There's what. Two, two and six. six. So there's a realistic possibility they're two and fourteen this year. I mean, there there might be in the Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes here. Yeah, you you don't want to commit mass quantities of money to Dak Prescott or maybe any money to Dak Prescott. Obviously, what you've got in the locker room now is not a starting quarterback. I don't know. Maybe possible. You, you know, now you're looking at Mike McCarthy having to have a rookie call. I don't know. It's weird. It's, I don't know. It's going to be, I don't know if Mike McCarthy, if Mike McCarthy just cannot, it seems like they, they, his message is already gone and he's been the coach for nine weeks, eight weeks. I think it's possible. I, I think it's really possible. I, I would have said no way, maybe two or three weeks ago, um, even after the Prescott injury. But uh, at this point, I, I think it's I think it's possible. I think a lot of things are on the table with this Dallas team. It's a it's it's a bad bad situation. I mean, look at it this way: he, Gary Jones hung on to Jason Garrett for what many people think was too long, True. way too long. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. It's, he may have an itchy trigger finger. So we'll see. He might. 
All right. The Miami Dolphins and the Arizona Cardinals. We get Tua Tonga Vailoa, week number two. The week one experience, albeit a win, was not pretty for Tua. But again, the job of the of the quarterback is to lead his team to a victory, and no matter how it happens. So <laughs> the four and three Dolphins are going to the Arizona Cardinals, who were five and two. I would say Tony's Johnson's probably surprise team of the year here in this spot. <laughs> no offense. Uh, Arizona is a four and a half point favorite. The total is 49 in this spot. Uh, I am not uh, feeling very good about Tua. This defense, you said it again midweek, uh, Tony. This defense was surprisingly improved than what you thought in, in, in Arizona. So uh, another good defense like Arizona. I'm not sure if Tua's ready. I, I heard on the radio uh, last night on my drive home, and I'll I'll use his I'll name drop him. Jason Smith, who's on Fox Sports Radio, said that there's a realistic possibility that this is the rest of this season is an audition for Tua, and there's a chance that if they find themselves in the top five next year, which probably isn't likely at four and three, or unless they lose all their games, they may move on if Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence is available. I thought that was crazy when I initially heard it, but is that where we are now with coaches getting fired so quickly that, I mean, we saw Josh Rosen, the top 10 pick, what, two years ago, get traded when they drafted Kyler Murray. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound as crazy as I initially thought. So I don't know. We'll see. But Arizona, Kyler Murray firing on all cylinders, minus four and a half, total 49. It really comes down to you trust Tua to at least perform or at least Miami, Miami's offense to keep this close, or you take Arizona that has the offense to produce pretty quick and efficiently against this all right Miami defense. So, I mean, that, that that's what I kind of see this game as. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, Tua now has to go on the road and, um, you know, your first road game in the NFL is always a bit of an experience, certainly. Um, you know, it, it's, I think it'll be a, a big learning experience uh, overall. I'm not really confident that he'll have much of a better game than last week, um, but will he need it, you know, is the question. Um, you know, it, it's tough. It's tough to know. I obviously did not call Arizona very well uh, this year. You know, I am surprised at the uh, the record, especially based on, uh, you know, the wager I made, you know, preseason with uh, the under season wins. But, uh, you know, I decided that since I, you know, haven't had a good feel and I am a little bit surprised by this team, it's it's a very hard bet on or against team just because I, I don't think I've, I've handled them very well and not really knowing what we're going to get from the quarterback position in Miami. And they've been a bit of a, a small surprise, I think, as well with how, how strong they've even been on the defensive side. Uh, it's just a game I'm, I'm going to I'm going to quite easily pass here until I feel like we know a little bit more about what's going on, um, you know, in the Miami offensive situation. That's fair. These two uh, quarterbacks, Tua and Kyler, have met one other time, and that was in a college football playoff game where Tua and the Tide were able to beat Kyler Murray. But I don't think uh, – I think uh, Kyler Murray's got the better team around him this year, this time around. So, All right, Saints v. Buccaneers. This one could be a fun Sunday night game where uh, Tom Brady and – Drew Brees could literally leapfrog each other in terms of the all-time touchdown record throughout the game. They did it last week. Uh, Brees took the lead Sunday day, and Tom Brady took it Sunday, or Monday night. I think it'd be fun to see like Brees come out, throw two, take the record, and then just go back and forth. I think the first week the kinks were being worked out with Tampa – uh, this is, uh, they look like they're firing all cylinders. They get back Antonio Brown. What that means, we don't know. Uh, we talked about that a little bit midweek on, on what we should expect. Uh, I think Antonio Brown's going to shut his mouth for a half a year if it means getting a ring and maybe getting a contract by Tampa or by somebody else uh, next year. I, I'd like to think Antonio Brown's done enough, or, you know, done enough shutting up to get himself back in the league. And if he proves in eight games that he can play, we've seen it in the NFL. If you can play, it really doesn't matter what you did in the past. The line on this game is four in favor of Tampa, the home team. And the total is 50 and a half, Token. Yeah, it's 
I mean, d- definitely one of the better ge- Sunday night games of the the year. And I also heard that Michael Thomas is possible to, for a return on this one. Not for sure, but a train wreck his season's been. Yeah. Mm. So, and, and that would definitely help uh, Drew Brees in the passing game of the Saints. So, it's definitely one to watch. It just screams a trap to me all around. So, not not good overall. I think the handle will be big on this game because one Sunday night you're chasing, chasing. losses. It's Brees and Brady. It's a marquee matchup that, you know, there's sometimes where I'm watching, you know, the NFL all day and then Sunday nights, you know, I'm kind of tired or I got to go to work and I'm like, you know, I don't really worry about that game. This one I think all eyes are going to be on. So traditionally I try to stay, Tony, off of the game betting-wise where all eyes are on it and all bets are on it. Right. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I like – it's just like, you know, betting on those Sun Belt games in college football. You know, you just – you. Bet on whatever. It doesn't matter what the game is. You know, just find the value and go for it. But uh, I'm with you. I, I tend to stay away from the uh, the, the higher marquee games here. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, besides the Antonio Brown situation, uh, you know, what are we going to see from, from New Orleans if we do get Michael Thomas? You know, is that offense open back up a little bit? Uh, we should get back, you know, not only just him, but I think almost the rest of the receiving core as well. You know, New Orleans should be relatively fully healthy again uh, on the offensive side, and we haven't really seen that pretty much all season long. So, so that should be kind of fun uh, as well. And I, and I think if we can get both offenses here sort of going on all cylinders, um, this could be a back-and-forth fest that, that, that should be a lot of fun. Um, you know, Tampa looks like they're going to be tough uh, down the stretch. It's, uh, it's been a work in progress. You know, I remember watching the first game against New Orleans very, very closely, and they looked like they were a bit of a fish out of water. They didn't really belong in the same field, uh, you know, at times, whereas now they have really been humming. You know, yeah, I know they kind of phoned it in a little bit against the Giants, and it wasn't the best performance, but uh, this team has really looked strong uh, the last two or three or four weeks. And, then, you know, I know you mentioned it, Aaron, you know, how much better this defense is, you know, from last year. It might be the best transition, you know, we've seen from, from one year to the next uh, for a side of the football. And, uh you know, we'll see how well they can do, though, against New Orleans. That's always a tall order, uh, you know, keeping them under wraps. And um, yeah, I think it'll be a great game. I think it'll be a fun game. And, uh, and I'm hoping for some good back and forth action. All right. And the Monday night finale here, we've got New England and the Jets. New England is an eight and a half point road favorite taking on the Jets, who are 0-8 this year. They have lost eight consecutive games to start the season many by a lot of lopsided scores. And the New England Patriots have won eight consecutive meetings against the Jets, a lot of them by lopsided scores. (laughs) Uh, But this Patriots team offensively is coming in just completely struggling. They're struggling at quarterback. They're struggling to find a consistent running game, although Damian Harris had a pretty good game last week. I picked Damian Harris one week too late on on that prop bet. Uh, They got nobody to throw the ball to, but defensively they are still 12th in scoring defense and 14th in total defense. And the Jets have only scored 17 points or more once this season. So those two things are not good for the Jets. The Jets are 0-4 at home. The New England Patriots are 0-3 on the road this year. Something's got to give there. I'm thinking it's the New England Patriots going to end their 0-3 on the road and go to 1-3. But – if New England somehow has some defensive inefficiencies and their offense still stinks, we might have a game here. Possibly. And it, I mean, all eyes are going to be on this game, even though it's a kind of crappy Monday night football game. It's a divisional game. But it just, it's a prime time game and the yeah. home team's getting eight and a half points. Yes. And stat says, take the dog. The Jets? Yeah. <laughs> Stats say take the dog, but the Jets say, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, this it, is a really – oh, sorry, are we done talking? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm done. He's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, is, this is an ugly one. Uh, I will say, uh, I guess I'll reveal that my biggest bet by far of the week uh, so far is a, is a two-team teaser, and it starts out with uh, the Giants plus nine, and it culminates with New England minus one. 
here. And I, I, you know, it's sometimes you feel comfortable with these things. You know, you really, you feel good getting that six extra points. You know, it's, it, it really doesn't seem like there's a lot of ways this one can lose. I, I am not, if the first side comes through, I am not going to feel comfortable the entire time with this thing. Nobody wants to be on new England at any point. I don't even care. It doesn't matter who they're playing at this point. It was, uh, you know, they had a nice enough game against Buffalo probably should have won that one, but it's a very uncomfortable team to be on. Newton has not looked very good. And, uh, you know, defensively, we, we know of the struggles, you know, on, uh, in really a lot, a lot of facets uh, of that defense. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's uncomfortable. Uh, there's no way in hell I'd want to lay the eight or eight and a half here. So why do I even want to take this thing down? Well, it just made a lot of sense. It's a, it's a really low total. Um, you know, try to hold on to those points as much as you can in these low total games. And, uh, you know, the Jets have struggled to score against everybody, really. So maybe it'll hold true with New England, but uh, it's a hold-your-nose game. There's no doubt about that. Well, maybe if you get that Giants part of the teaser in, you maybe can fire the Jets' money line. It's uh, plus three mm -hmm. at the West Gate right now. So It's a consideration for sure. That might be where you are. Hedging a two-team teaser. What does your I, life become? That, it, it's entirely on the table. It's not even a joke. Entirely on the table. I agree. 100% agree with you. I, I get it totally. So, All right. That is the slate in week number nine here in the NFL. Now it is time to reveal our picks. Uh, so since Spike is in first place and he's not here, I will go ahead and read his picks. Oh, good. And let's see. Hopefully we have an atrocious 0-5 week ahead of us here. Absolutely. Yes. yes. All right. So beginning with the Giants football team game, he is taking that football team minus two and a half points. Remember, we do have to move a flat line against us. So he's taking Washington minus two and a half. He is taking Seattle minus three and a half on the road against Buffalo. Wow. He is taking Indianapolis. It's a pick em, so he's taking it minus a half. He is also taking Las Vegas minus a half. And the final, he's on the Monday night game. He is taking that under, which is 42. So he is moving it to 41 and a half. Token, since you're in second place with 23 points, one behind Mr. Spike, I'll let you read your picks. All right, I'll start out with the Seattle-Buffalo game. This seems odd for the Buffalo game, but I'm going to take the over 55 and a half, moving at the, the hook and that one. And these defenses are not that good. I am going to go against Spike on this one. I'm glad he's on Indy in this one, and I'm going to take Baltimore minus a half. I, I, it, it even seems more sense now that everybody likes Indy, and Baltimore has underperformed the last kind of three weeks or so, but they played like the better teams of the AFC. It, it just makes more sense. I'm also going to tail Spike. For the Raiders pick, though, unfortunately. But I, I, I think that is the better side of that game. E even without Josh Jacobs, I am going to take Arizona minus the four and a half, and that is my bankroll dump of the week. Really? Believe it or not. Wow, yeah. that is surprising. Yes. Wow. I, I think Miami got lucky to stay alive yeah. in that game against L.A., with those two kind of fluke scores and against this Arizona defense, I think they get murdered this week and lose by double digits. So nice. e wow. e e even if there's a back door to get to 10, I, I still don't see Miami coming close to covering. So, um, wow. and I'm going to take Pittsburgh and Dallas over the 43 and a half Pittsburgh could easily score 30 themselves, if not more. And Dallas... <laughs> Dallas you just said that. Are they going to get in the field goal range? <laughs> but I think they're decent enough to get at least one touchdown and a field goal, so... And get it pretty damn close to the total. Excellent. All right. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna tail you here with the uh, Seattle Buffalo over token, 55 and a half. This was the last one in, the one I struggled with, the one I almost 
was late with my picks. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I'm with you. I think these defenses are bad. Let's just go with it. Uh, I guess this is probably going to be the game where it's like 17 to six, right? You know, pretty standard stuff there, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, <laughs> I think it makes the most sense. Um, Secondly, uh, Denver plus four and a half uh, against Atlanta. I, I don't have a whole lot of rhyme or reason here. I think we've gone a little bit too far with Atlanta, you know, being this kind of a favorite. I know Denver's, you know, a, a bit of a dump, but um, I just don't want to be laying a lot of points here with Atlanta. Uh, third pick, I actually like this one. I've already bet this. I uh, wasn't sure when to bet it. I decided to bet it today because I, I don't know if it was going to go up or down, but I feel like 10 and a half is good enough. You know, we're probably not going to get you know, past 12 or so. Uh, I like Caroline a lot here, plus 10 and a half. Uh, I, I've even got some money uh, on the money line. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, I'll take Carolina, but I don't really think they can win. Uh, I, yeah, I'm in. Uh, I, I think they can win. Uh, you know, we, we saw Kansas City lose to, to Las Vegas this year at home. I, I don't see why Carolina can't give them a game. They give everybody a game, basically. Um, I like this team. I like this team a lot. Uh, you know, I like to see McCaffrey back. That would be helpful, but um, – I think this is a real shot here. So Carolina plus 10 and a half. Um, yeah, fourth one, I'm on the opposite side of your token, uh, Pittsburgh, Dallas under 42 and a half. You know, just the lack of scoring here. There's a couple of really strong trends that sort of converge as well. Uh, you know, double digit home underdogs. Uh, the under gets there like 85% of the time in the last five years it's happened. Uh, there's a few things. Pittsburgh, when they're more than a six point favorite on the road, the under's like 23 straight. It's some crazy damn stat. Uh, I think it'll be a sit on sit on the ball kind of nasty game, and if Pittsburgh doesn't show up for this thing, it it, it could very well be thirteen to nothing. We'll be betting on the no touchdown in this game. Uh, hopefully, get about a hundred to one on that. Uh, it's usually right around a hundred in most games. I think there's an outside chance that doesn't happen. And then the fifth and final game here: New Orleans, Tampa Bay over fifty and a half. Let's get that up and down score fest that I talked about before. Uh, both teams touchdown back and forth, and we'll cover that thing in the third quarter. There you go. All right, bringing up the rear, hoping for a 5-0 and week to get myself still in the teens. <laughs> All right, we're going to start. I'm going to tell you with that Denver and Atlanta, I'm going to take Denver plus four and a half as well. I think they're going to win that game outright in, this, in the Georgia Dome or whatever they're calling that. Um, we are all on some version of that, uh, that uh, Seattle-Buffalo game. I'm going to take the home team plus two and a half Buffalo. I also think they're going to win that game. Uh, I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans. I think they're going to get back on their winning track, and I think they're going to blow out wow. Chicago. I'm going to take. Wow. Tennessee. I'm going to take Tennessee minus six and a half here. I like fading but, the world. I like that. Nice. But you know what? I told you with uh, with Chicago, I you don't know what to do. Uh, the Detroit and Minnesota game. I think that's going to stay under fifty two and a half. I'm hoping that Stat Padford maybe sits this one out. And uh, we can get like a 27-10 game there with Minnesota. Get Minnesota that 7-5 and five I keep talking about. <laughs> and then I'm going to hold my nose, take the plunge with Houston on the road, land 7.5. I still think <laughs> might be my dumbest bet, but the picks are locked in. So <laughs> I, made the, I made the pick, I locked it in, and I've literally throughout this podcast talked myself out of it, but it's, it's too late. So yeah, you, you tried to fade yourself on that, and it still didn't come out. Uh, Houston minus seven and a half. I'm hoping <laughs> Jake Luton maybe throws yeah. three pick six. Close it up. Yeah. And I've got Deshaun Watson in two fantasy leagues, so I need four touchdowns out of him. Those are my picks uh, in that one. Hoping for a five and a week, and not an zero and five week where I have to put more money in the jar. All right, it's DFS time with Token. I feel like that's like a little Mr. Rogers segment. Daily Fantasy, <laughs> we are using the DraftKings app. And uh, Token with a 50K budget. Let's put something together here that's going to make people some money. Yeah, 50K budget as always. And this week is going to be a good one. We're going to start out with Russell Wilson against the Buffalo defense. And the cost on him is seventy, or yeah, 7600 so far. I'm going to move on to Dalvin Cook against my Lions defense because they can't stop the run worth the shit. And he had four touchdowns last year. Or last uh, week. That's it. Yeah, and that's Dalvin all. Cook can easily get it in the end zone and might even – he might even come close to 200 yards in this game. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I'll have to look at the number on him for most rushing yards this week, and if he is six to one or, or better, I am going to fire on that. Uh, for eighty-two hundred, Dalvin Cook, I am going to move 
My other running back is going to be Melvin Gordon against the Atlanta defense. Even though the defense is starting to come back for Atlanta for 5,300, I saw some value on him. Uh, wide receivers moving on to Tyler Lockett against the Buffalo defense, especially with uh, yeah, with, with Wilson back there uh, for 6,800. I thought that was a good option. Uh, moving on to uh, will we need the fourth? For the Baltimore against the Colts for 4,100. Larry Fitzgerald taking a little diamond in the rough for the gay porno. A basement uh, dweller. Yeah, basement <laughs> dweller, 3,800. The s- second cheapest on the list. I mean, if you don't count the defense, it's the cheapest for 3,800. I-, I like that value on that, especially against Miami's defense. Moving on, tight end Hawkinson. I think even if Stafford or uh yeah Stafford if he doesn't start I think he will get at least a few targets on that and for 5100 I saw a reasonable value uh Corey Davis our course of the week again especially if Humphrey's out even against the Chicago defense for 5900 I thought that was the steal and then Cardinals defense against Tua and his second start, but I I think last week was kind of a fluke, and him getting only 97 yards, it might be even worse for him this week. So I like the Cardinal start there, yeah. For yeah, sure. yeah. Um, I agree. Second, or uh, yeah, his second start for 2,900 Cardinals defense all the way. Yeah, he might come back down to earth this week. So that's a, that's a fair start. that's a fair start there with the Cardinals defense. All right, and to wrap up the show, as we do every week, it's the 14.14 William Hill teaser. (laughs) Get your pens out. I am now currently in the plus column on this for the year. So if you are ready, I will go. We are taking the first pick is the Ravens. It is a pick them, as we discussed. So I'm going to move that. I'm going to take two touchdowns, even on the road. I I think uh, Ravens win this game outright, but why not have two touchdowns as a buffer? Uh, I will take the Chiefs plus three and a half. Tony Johnson, you seem to think that Carolina can win this game. I strongly disagree. <laughs> okay. But just in case they do, by a last second field goal, I've got the hook. All right, I am taking that home team that I think is going to win against my fiance, Russell Wilson. I'm taking the Bills plus 17 points. And the lowest of the low-hanging fruit of the week, I am taking the Steelers and moving that line to a pick God forbid if that's the game that fucks me over. (laughs) I don't don't see the Cooper Rush-Garrett Gilbert combination really really screwing that one up for me. So, again, to recap, Ravens plus 14, Chiefs plus 3.5, Bills plus 17, and the Steelers just to win the game. All right, that's going to do it for us. We appreciate you guys listening. Again, please follow us on Twitter at Vegas Squares. Check out our Facebook page. Check us out on Instagram, Vegas Squares Podcast. We are going to uh, do the Masters Podcast next week in the middle of the week, so we cannot wait. We've got lots of bets, lots of value picks, lots of storylines, and much more. So please tune into that Masters Podcast next week. Check us out on the website, lvsquares.com. For Token Tony, for Fake Token Tony Johnson, I am Aaron. We will catch you on the next one. Good luck on your bets.